Last week I recorded a tune called Peg Leg Shuffle by Carl Kress, and this week I'm going to explain a little bit about the process that went into recording that tune. The notation that I was using comes from this book, Masters of the Plectrum Guitar, from Mel Bay Publications. But I don't use the notation literally because I really like to dig in and listen to the way that the composers, who are also the original performers of a lot of these tunes, played their pieces, and I try and uh, see how close I can get to them in many cases. Carl Kress tuned his low sixth string to B flat, and that informs a lot of the way I play this, the way that I play this piece. Um, so this one starts with an F diminished chord, and then the notation says to play D. But I noticed that Carl Kress, and on another recording by Bucky Pizzarelli from the album April Kisses, both of those guitar players play what sounds like a lot of just strumming up and down on the diminished chord, and so I go back and forth in my approach for the first section of this tune. Now, because I'm tuning my low six string to B flat, I don't have f four note chords in some of the voicings that I'm playing, so I'll play three note chords. And then I don't play the low bass note noted at the end of the phrase that the book has, because Carl Crest doesn't play that either. Um, moving along to the next section of the song, we started in F. The notation says to next go to E major and to play along the low E string. Now, Bucky Pizzarelli plays on his sixth string on his recording, but Carl Kress plays on his sixth string, which is tuned to B-flat. So when I tune my guitar to a low B-flat, that's in order to play more like Carl Kress and play this phrase. And although the notation doesn't have me playing as many steady eighth notes, that's what I'm hearing more of Carl Kress doing in that portion of the song. Now, my own interpretation is not perfect in this section. I just sort of have fun with it. I normally play these tunes learning a new tune from the book or recording a new tune between uh, once every week to once every month. And I'm just trying to learn them as quickly as possible, chronicle them, and have fun on social media. So if something's not perfect, that's probably why. Um, this section transitions to, which I can do because I've got that low B flat, and then, um, now again, with the low B flat, I can play these E flat octave notes because I've got E flat on my low sixth string at the fifth fret and on the regularly tuned to A fifth string at the sixth fret. That continues. And um, as I move into the next section, I can finish again on my E flat six chord and slide up. And now the book again says to be in a different key than Carl Kress recorded it. The book says go to A major. Carl Kress is here playing in A flat major, so I use his key centers. And I'll talk about that in just a moment why I use his key centers. It doesn't just have to do with the way that he recorded the piece, so that's a, that's a big part of it. This part is slower. I take advantage of my low B flat string sometimes, like uh, in this phrase. And I also alternate the bass notes with the chords, not exactly as is notated, just for my own interpretation for fun. And I finish that third section with the A flat major um, there is a certain point that I skipped here. There is a certain point. Right. Okay. Here it is. Right before we got to this third section, the second section ends like this. Now the notation says this. Sorry, 
I have to figure out the uh, transposition here. Uh, is this. Nope. Almost. I'm trying to translate the keys because uh, I'm trying to stay in A flat. In any event, um, what I hear what I hear Carl Crest playing is actually instead of one note sliding up, I hear a double stop. One more time. And then A flat C D. So that's outlining a uh, ninth chord. I could use that little B flat there, that would sound pretty nice. To the E flat. Okay, that goes in to the third section, which we talked about a moment ago. Getting into the end of the piece, I'm going back to my F diminished, and this is how things are relevant when I was talking about key centers. I really feel like Carl Kress approaches this piece of music like a classical piece of music where the key centers and the way that they enter and exit each other are important. He starts in F, he goes to B flat. That's a fourth relationship that's very normal in composition. He then goes down to A flat, that's down a step, that's fine. From A flat, he returns to the original key, which is F. A flat major is the relative major of F minor. So there's a nice relationship between A flat and F. If I stick with a notated key, as per the Mel Bay book, and I'm not criticizing Mel Bay, there could be any number of reasons for notating things this way. That's a topic for another video, perhaps. The key centers go F, E, A, F, and A to F is a much more jerky transition, musically speaking. So this explains the way I tune the guitar, some of my techniques, some of my chord voicings, um, some of my attitude. I hope you enjoyed the explanation and that we get to see each other another time soon. <laughs>